<laughs> oh, hello, little ones. Oma was just showing her furry little friends some of the puppets that I made for Oma's reading room. It's November, and this time of year always makes me think of puppets and marionettes. I know, you thought I was going to say fall leaves, <laughs> but no. Do you know why? Because of Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Thanksgiving Day is always a special day of the year. It's time to be together with family and friends, hopefully sharing good food and lots of giggles. But do you know what one of my most favorite things of that day is? Is to stay in my pajamas as long as I can while watching the Macy's Parade. Today's story is the true story of the puppeteer of Macy's Parade. There is so much detail in the book, I highly recommend to get your very own copy. And even though I'm not in my pajamas, I am so excited to read you this book. Let's go. Why, thank you, shy baby bear. You are always so good holding my glasses. Today's book is Balloons Over Broadway, the true story of the puppeteer of the Macy's Parade. And it is written and illustrated by Melissa Sweet. Let's find out a little bit about her first. Like Tony Sarg, who is the developer behind the marionettes, the balloons of the Macy's Day Parade, Melissa Sweet loved to figure out how to make things move as a child. She even remembers taking apart her own marionettes to see how they worked. Today, she still plays with simple materials to construct her brilliant mixed media collage illustrations, for which she has won a Caldecott honor for A River of Words, written by Jen Bryant and two New York Times Best Illustrated Citations. Good for you, Melissa. Ms. Sweet lives with her husband and dogs in the charming seaport town of Rockport, Maine. You can visit her at her own website, www.melissasweet.net, to find out how to make your own wondrous moving puppets. That sounds like fun. But for now, let's read this wonderful story. The Balloons Over Broadway, the true story of the puppeteer of Macy's Parade. Here he is, Anthony Tony Frederick Sarb. Sarb rhymes with arg. I wonder if he was a pirate. <laughs> Every little movement has a meaning of its own said Tony Sarg. From the time he was a little boy, Tony Sarg loved to figure out how to make things move. He once said he became a marionette man when he was only six years old. Wow! His father had asked him to feed their chickens at 6.30 in the morning every day. Tony had an idea. What if he could feed the chickens without leaving his bed. What a great idea. He rigged up some pulleys and ran rope from the chicken coop door to his bedroom window. That night, he spread chicken feed outside the chicken coop door. The next morning, Tony pulled on the rope and the door to the chicken coop opened. The chickens ate their breakfast. Tony stayed snug in his bed and his dad, so impressed, never made Tony do another chore. <laughs> when Tony grew up, he moved to London, where he discovered that no one was making marionettes for kids anymore. So out of wood, cloth, and strings, Tony began to make puppets. He figured out ways to make his marionettes' movements so lifelike that they performed as if they were real actors. Word soon spread about Tony's amazing marionettes. 
When Tony moved to New York City, the Tony Sarg marionettes began performing on Broadway. In the heart of New York City in Herald Square was the biggest store on earth, R. H. Macy's department store. Macy's had heard about Tony's puppets and asked him to design a puppet parade for the store's holiday windows. So Tony made new puppets based on storybook characters, then attached them to gears and pulleys to make them move. In Macy's Wonder Town windows, Tony's mechanical marionettes danced across the stage as if by magic. All day long, they performed to shoppers jostling for a better look. Look at those. But Macy's had an even bigger job in store for Tony. Many of the people working at Macy's were immigrants. And as the holidays approached, they missed their own holiday traditions of music and dancing in the streets. Macy's agreed to put on a parade for their employees and they hired Tony to help. Great idea. Tony too was an immigrant, so he loved the idea of creating a parade based on street carnivals from all over the world. He made costumes and built horse-drawn floats, and Macy's even arranged to bring in bears, elephants, and camels from the Central Park Zoo. The animals joined hundreds of Macy's employees on Thanksgiving Day in 1924, winding their way from Harlem to Herald Square. It was a dazzling parade. In fact, Macy's first parade was such a success that they decided to have one every year on Thanksgiving Day to celebrate America's own holiday. Each year the parade grew, but when Macy's brought in lions and tigers, in addition to the bears, elephants, and camels, the animals roared and growled and frightened the children. Oh no! Macy's asked Tony to replace the animals. Tony hoped to replace the animals with some kind of puppets, but his marionettes were less than three feet tall. He would have to make much larger puppets in order for them to be seen in the parade. And how could he make them strong enough to hold up in bad weather, yet light enough to move up and down the streets? Wow, that's a problem. Tony knew of a company in Ohio that made blimps out of rubber, the perfect material for any weather. When he called the company and showed them his sketches, they agreed to make what Tony wanted. Still, how would Tony make his big puppets move? Hmm. Oh, then Tony had an idea from an Indonesian rod puppet in his toy collection. On Thanksgiving Day, Tony's creatures, some as high as 16 feet, spilled into the streets and the crowds cheered wildly. Part puppet, part balloon, the air-filled rubber bags wobbled down the avenues, propped up by the wooden sticks. But now the sidewalks were so packed with people that only those in the first few rows could really see the parade. Tony realized his puppets would have to be even bigger and higher off the ground. And though the sticks helped to steer the puppets, they were stiff and heavy. Tony wanted his balloons to articulate, to move and to gesture, more like puppets. But how? With a marionette, the controls are above, and the puppet hangs down. But what if the controls were below, and the puppet could rise up? Wow, what a good idea! 
During the next year, Tony set his new idea into motion. This time, he asked the company in Ohio to make balloons out of rubberized silk. As strong as rubber, but lighter than rubber alone. Most important, Tony ordered the balloons to be filled not just with air, but with helium too. Since helium is lighter than air, it would make the balloons rise. Once the puppets were completed, they were deflated and shipped back to Tony in New York. Tony did not know if everything would go as planned. He was holding his breath, I'm sure. It was still dark on Thanksgiving morning when Tony filled the balloons with helium, tethering them down with sandbags. By 1 p.m., the sidewalks were packed with people ready for the parade. Then, one by one, Tony cut the lines to the sandbags and shouted, Let's have a parade! Whoa! Up they rose! And the magnificent upside-down marionettes rose up to the skies. Yippee! <laughs> Nodding and waving to the crowds below, they sailed past Central Park. They sailed down Broadway. They shimmied and swayed through the canyons of New York City. High above the crowds, they flounced in the afternoon wind, pulling the rope handlers this way and that. Yet with every heave-ho, the balloons gestured and articulated like wild puppets, and the crowd screamed for more. After the balloons were eased under the L, they ended in front of Macy's at Tony's Wonder Town windows. It was a parade New Yorkers would never forget. And from that day on, every Thanksgiving morning, crowds have lined the sidewalks of New York City to see what new balloons would rise in the skies for Macy's famous parade. Tony Sark, the puppeteer who loved to figure out how to make things move, had set the stage with a little rigging for a puppet to be anything anyone could imagine it to be. The end. Ooh, look at that. As Oma has said, there is so much detail in the book. I really do hope you'll consider getting a copy of your own. Wasn't Mr. Sark brilliant? He certainly had a wonderful imagination. And I am so glad we got to learn more about the mammoth-sized balloons that have wobbled and swayed up and down New York City for more than 80 years. Oma went to the parade one year, and I can't wait for this year's parade. But I'm sure I'll be home watching in my pajamas. Until then, Oma is sending you her hugs and her blessings. I hope you'll catch them and hold them real tight. Happy Thanksgiving! Bye-bye!
dry When you sail on stormy seas I will be your guide I will be your guide It's a big